In this short video, we're going to be discussing how to design an actual turbine inside of Xtreme. We're just going to be focusing on the main capabilities so that we keep the video as short as possible. Here I created a new project by clicking on this button, which gives me access to this window here, where I can select the type of machine I want to work with, whether that's going to be for compressible fluids or incompressible flows. Then we get to pick what kind of input data we want to work with. Do we want to specify some boundary conditions and some geometric parameters in order to generate some flow path designs? Or do we want to import an existing geometry coming from hardware uh, or different software and then seeing how we can benchmark this design, um, how it would operate at different boundary conditions, uh, perform some optimizations, etc. So here I'm going to run with a preliminary design of an actual turbine and click on the create button. And that's going to open the project window over here, which is going to contain all the information about this particular turbine. So for now, everything is empty because we just started the project. But you can see just the level of information that we'll have access to uh, using this uh, window. Uh, we can also select from here the working fluid, and there's a lot of different things that can be selected in here. We interface with a lot of different uh, databases. Uh, including things like the RefProp database from NIST um, and some others. Okay. If we're interested in doing a preliminary design, then we're going to go to the preliminary design window over here, where we're going to set the number of designs that we want the software to generate. By default, it's 200, based on some boundary conditions, geometric parameters, and some geometric constraints at the bottom. To save some time, I have a file here in which I already have some of the data that inputted. And we'll be able to see in here um, uh, what the software is actually going to be doing. So in this case, I, I asked the software to generate 5,000 different designs. We can review the progress bar at the bottom to see that we've done about 20% of that in a very short amount of time. Uh, so each of the parameters that you see in the table below is going to be inputted as a minimum value and a maximum value. These two values can be the same, as it is the case here, um, in which situation the software is just going to consider that this is a fixed value. Uh, if the values are going to be different, like it's the case here for the rotational speed, herb diameter, number of stages, etc., the software is going to pick a random value between the mean and the max and generate a uh, design based on, on this value. It's going to do this for each parameter, in this case, 5,000 different times. As this is going, we can see on the right side, we have a 3D design space on which we're going to be able to review all the different geometries that have been generated. So here we can see we have finished the calculation process and out of uh, the 5,000 designs generated, there's 247 that can be um, that can be reviewed by the user. The other ones just don't fit the constraints specified in here. Um, yeah. So each of these dots is going to be corresponding to a different design. So here we can see one of the actual turbine that was generated and which correspond to this dot right here. If I select one right here, we're going to see this is going to update to show us the flow path corresponding to this geometry. If I select another one down here, we'll see again this is going to be a different geometry altogether. So the goal of this module really is going to be, um, this preliminary design module is going to be to figure out what is going to be the best um, combination of input that's going to give us the best output so that we can select the best design for our particular application based on if we want to improve uh, or increase the efficiency, if we have certain size restrictions, uh, manufacturing um, limits, etc. So instead of clicking on all of these dots manually and seeing which one we like and which one we don't, we have this Design Space Explorer tool, which can be very, very useful. It includes two different tables, one right here and one over here, which will be used to plot whatever parameter we want on each of the various axes, as well as the color of the dot. So for example, I can plot the number of stages here on the x-axis, keep the power on the y-axis, and I can see that for a uh, one-stage and two-stage machine, there was no design that was fitting these conditions. For a three-stage machine, I can get up to 
12 and a half megawatt of power for, sorry, with two, two stage machine, uh, no one stage design here. With a three stage machine, I can get up to like 13.2, etc. Alternatively, I could, for example, look at the efficiency. Uh, for example, here, if a two stage machine is going to provide an efficiency way too low, we can say the minimum number of stages we want to consider is going to be three, in which case you can see it grades out some other points here that are not going to be applicable. If I can get the same efficiency for a six and a 10 stage machine, there's probably no point in going with a 10 stage machine. That's just an example here. So I'm going to set it, for example, to eight for the maximum value. In the same way, I can look at the influence of the rotational speed and see that here around 4,500 RPM is where we're going to have the best performances. Same thing for the hub diameter, etc. So by, by looking at all of this, we can very easily and very quickly uh, figure out uh, what is going to be the performance of the machine at the 1D level, as well as uh, the overall uh, size and configuration of the machine. Once we selected the design that we want, all we have to do is click on Save Data. That's going to take this geometry and throw it into all the other modules that we have in uh, the software. From there, we can do some 1D optimization. We can run some 1D and 2D analysis. So that's going to be 1D mean line and 2D streamline. That's going to be done by clicking on the Run button right here. And we're going to see the convergence graph here at the top, which is going to, uh, to calculate very quickly the uh, performances of the machine, as well as all the different kinematics, thermodynamics, and loss parameters, which can then help us um, optimize the, the machine. This 1D and 2D solver is also going to be used anytime we want to run some design of experiment optimization using the X-Plan module here, or when we're going to be uh, looking at doing some parametric studies or some performance maps. So if we look at XMAP here just for a second, uh, I will open an example so you can see um, what type of things we can do. So as I mentioned, we're going to have parametric studies and performance map capabilities. Let me just open one of the examples here. And on the right side, we'll be able to, to select a few of the hundreds of different parameters we can select from, which are going to be varied throughout the calculation process. So here I'm looking at an existing map in which you can see the outlet static pressure and the rotational speed have been selected as the variables. And here, these are going to correspond to the outputs of the calculation. So we want to review the mass flow, the power, the efficiency, pressure ratio, etc. Once the calculation is run, with this click on the button, we can go to the calculation results. We have this big table here with all of the data in a tabular format that we can copy to a spreadsheet, for example. We can review the results then in a 2D or a 3D map, and that's the case over here where we have the pressure ratio as well as the efficiency here on the vertical axis for different rotational speed. The blade profiling is going to be done in Different, differently for actual or radio machines. So here we have a specific tool for the profiling and 3D blade design of actual blades, in which uh, we're going to be profiling each element individually and then each section within each row. Uh, so by default, when we start a project, it has three different spanner sections, one for the herb, mean, and tip. Here we can see this project, I've already in increased it to 11 sections, so we have more control over the, um, the blade geometry. We can increase the number of sections up to 49 if that's desired. Uh, we also have a potential flow solver here. So anytime we're going to make some changes uh, to the geometry, you can see it's automatically going to show us the new blade uh, design as well as uh, recalculate the potential flow that runs here in the background. So everything is going to be done uh, quite interactively. On the 2D view and on the 3D view over here, as well as on the graph, it will show things like the curvature, the uh, blade loading, and the distribution of the channel here, etc. And information that will be at the bottom here is going to correspond to um, the, um, the spanwise distribution of the various parameters. So we can see, for example, for this parameter here, we have a constant value for all the various sections except for the hub. 
which is uh, the inlet metal angle that I selected, that I changed here from 90 to 105. So if I put it back over here, we can see this value is not going to be close to 90 degrees. And now the blade is going to be smooth, as we can see on this window right here. If we want to go further than just the potential flow solver here, we can run a 2D CFD by using this button, or we can even go to the full 3D CFD by clicking on this icon right here. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, CFD. And there we're going to be able to select as many different components as we want. I'll just select the first stage here as an example. And you can see it automatically loads our geometry. So we have our stator and we have the rotor here on the right side. Here the pre-processing is going to be uh, very uh, simplified because all of the information comes directly from the product itself. So we know the number of blade of the stator, the various information about the clearances, the rotational speed for the rotor, etc. And then for each component, we can specify how we want the mesh to be created for all the different zones uh, of interest. Working fluid is already inherited from the project, as well as the various boundary conditions, which can still be um, modified if, uh, if desired. Going to the solver level, we can then select how many different iterations we want to run, um, if we want to resume an existing calculation, if we want to include viscosity and turbulence, if we want to run the, the full 3D channel or only some of the various spinal sections, etc. We'll be able to review at the bottom the uh, log as well as the convergence history, which is going to give us information as to where the convergence has been reached. Here I will stop the results so we can do some post processing, even though we have not reached convergence for this short uh, demonstration. We'll be able to review the conservation of mass here, which is again not achieved in this simple case. Things like the power, uh, kinematics parameter, thermodynamics parameter, the efficiency if this was converged, etc. Here I run the calculation on a very, very coarse mesh, which can be seen over here but we can increase the mesh so we can have hundreds of thousands or even millions of different uh, elements. Okay. Once this is um, done, uh, you can then review the uh, distribution of the various parameters of interest, static pressure, total pressure, temperatures, the Mach number, velocities, etc. Just any, any parameter you, you see here on the right side. Uh, we can look at the velocity vectors as well, and we can also perform some slices on any part of the section, sorry, of the, of the channel, in order to see how the flow at this location is going to behave. So I'm just creating a few different sections here to show you uh, what kind of data we're going to have access to. Okay, so you can see this is this section down here, this one is going to be this one, and the one here in diagonal is going to be the pink one right here. I can set the exact value uh, of the location of each, and then I can remove them here if desired. And I can also um, look at, for example, the, uh, the, the blade loading here for, for the various parameters. Looking at the stress calculation, we can actually account for the results of the 3D CFD that we just run. Uh, but we are going to be selecting one of the components of interest. Again, you can see the geometry is already loaded. Um, once you select which component you want to work with. So that also means that if you want to go back to your profiling tool, make some changes, uh, you can then click on the load data button and all of your settings will stay the same. You'll simply have an updated geometry here for which you can rerun the calculation on. Okay. Here again, all of the information is known. So things like the number of plates, the heights, the dimensions, etc. We can do the full design of the root, the disk, the lashing wires, the shroud, depending on what kind of uh, geometry we're going to have for each of, uh, of these components. In terms of solver capabilities, we're going to have static stresses, model calculation, harmonic calculation, Campbell interference and safe diagram, as well as hot to cold and cold to hot transformations. Once you're ready to um, to start uh, your, your calculation, you can just press the button right here, it's going to mesh it, and then it's going to, to actually 